Hi friends, it's Ms. Kayla from the Fredrickson Library. Today I'm going to read to you the story of Rapunzel. Once there lived a man and a woman who always wished for a child, but could not have one. They had a little window at the back of their house from which they could see a wonderful garden. The garden was full of the most beautiful flowers and herbs. It was surrounded by a high wall and no one dared to go in because it belonged to a witch who had great power and was feared by the world. Finally, they discovered they were going to have a baby. Soon after, the woman was standing by the window and looking down into the garden when she saw an area planted with the most tasty Rapunzel, an herb with leaves like lettuce and roots like a radish. It looked so fresh and green that she really wanted to eat some. This desire increased every day. The woman knew she could not get any of it and grew more pale and miserable each day. Her husband was worried about her and asked, what is wrong, my dear? Oh, she replied, if I can't eat some of the Rapunzel from the garden behind our house, I think I shall die. The man who loved her thought, I will bring her some of the Rapunzel myself, no matter the cost. In the twilight of the evening, he climbed over the wall and into the garden of the witch. Hastily, he grabbed a handful of Rapunzel and took it to his wife. She at once made herself a salad and ate it happily. However, she liked it so much that the next day she was hungry for three times as much as before. Her husband once more went into the garden. That evening, he set out again, but when he climbed over the wall, he was terribly afraid because he saw the witch standing before him. How dare you, she said angrily, sneak into my garden and steal my Rapunzel like a thief. You shall suffer for this. Ah, the frightened husband answered, please have mercy. I have to have the Rapunzel. My wife saw it from the window and was so hungry for it that she would die if she did not get any to eat. Then the witch allowed her anger to be softened and said to him, if this is true, I will allow you to take as much as you need. Only I make one condition. You must give me the baby daughter your wife will bring into the world. She shall be treated well and I will care for her like a mother. The man was so afraid that he agreed, and when the baby was born, the witch appeared at once, gave the child the name of Rapunzel, and took the baby away with her. Rapunzel grew into the most beautiful child beneath the sun. When she was 12 years old, the witch shut her into a tower in the forest. The tower had no stairs or doors, but only a little window at the very top. When the witch wanted to go in, she stood beneath the window and said, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel had magnificent long hair like gold, and when she heard the voice of the witch, she wound her braid around a hook by the window, and the hair fell down the side of the tower, and the witch climbed up. After a year, the prince rode through the forest and went by the tower. He heard a song which was so lovely that he had stopped to listen. This was Rapunzel, who in her loneliness enjoyed singing. The prince wanted to climb up to her and looked for the door of the tower, but couldn't find one. He rode home, but the singing had so deeply touched his heart that every day he went out into the forest to listen to it. Once, when he was standing behind a tree listening to Rapunzel's song, he saw the witch come and heard how she cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel let down the braids of her hair, and the witch climbed up to her. That must be how I get into the tower, thought the prince, and the next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately, the hair fell down, and the prince climbed up. At first, Rapunzel was terribly frightened when she saw the man. But the prince began to talk to her like a friend and told her that his heart had been so touched by her singing that he had to meet her. Then Rapunzel was not afraid. And when he asked her if she would be his wife and she saw that he was kind and handsome, she said, yes. She said, I will go with you, but I do not know how to get down. Bring some silk with you each time you visit and I will weave a ladder. Then, when it's ready, I will climb down and we shall escape together. They agreed that until that time, he could come and visit her in the evenings, for the old witch came by the day. The witch knew nothing of this until once Rapunzel said as she was distracted, Oh my, you are so much heavier when you climb than the young prince. 
you wicked child cried the witch what did you say i thought i had separated you from all the world but you have deceived me in her anger she clutched rapunzel's beautiful hair grabbed a pair of scissors and snip snap cut it all off rapunzel's lovely braids lay on the ground but the witch was not through she was so angry she took poor rapunzel into the desert where she had to live in great grief and misery the witch rushed back to the tower and fastened the braids of hair which she had cut off to the hook by the window and when the prince came and cried rapunzel rapunzel let down your hair she let the hair down the prince climbed to the window but he did not find rapunzel above he saw only the witch aha she cried you've come for rapunzel but she is no longer here singing in the tower rapunzel is banished and you will never see her again the prince was beside himself and in his despair he fell down from the tower he escaped with his life but he fell into a thorn bush which pierced his eyes then he wandered blind in the forest ate nothing but roots and berries and did nothing but weep over the loss of his dearest rapunzel the prince roamed in misery for some months and eventually came to the desert where the witch had banished rapunzel he heard a voice singing and it seemed so familiar to him that he went toward it when he approached rapunzel saw him and fell into his arms and wept two of her tears fell in his eyes and the prince could see again he led her to his kingdom where he was joyfully welcomed and they lived for a long time happy and content Hi friends, it's Miss Kayla and my friend Madden. Say hi. We are gonna put the events in our story in order. Are you ready? Okay, so this picture is the witch cuts off Rapunzel's hair. Oh my God. This one is Rapunzel's mom sees some Rapunzel growing in the garden. And this picture is Rapunzel gets locked in the tower. In our story, which one came first? Uh, what is... You're right, her mom saw Rapunzel growing in the garden first. Then out of these two, did Rapunzel's hair get cut off next or did she get locked in the tower next? Yes, she got locked in the tower next. And then last, what happened? She cut her hair off. You're right. Good job. Let's look at our next set of pictures. In this one, the prince falls out of the tower window. In this picture, the witch catches Rapunzel's dad stealing the Rapunzel plant. And in this one, the prince sees the witch climbing Rapunzel's hair. Which one happened first in our story? Are you sure he fell out of the tower first? No. Which one happened first? Yes, Rapunzel's dad stole the Rapunzel plant from the witch's garden. All right, let's look at these two. Which one happened after that? Did the witch climb Rapunzel's hair after that? Or did the prince fall out of the tower after that? Yes, good job. And then what happened last? What is he doing in this picture? All right, let's look at our last set of pictures. In this picture, the prince visits Rapunzel in the tower. In this picture, Rapunzel and the prince find each other in the desert. And in this picture, the witch takes baby Rapunzel from her parents. Which thing happened first in our story? Look at all the pictures. Yes, the witch took baby Rapunzel from her parents first. What came next? Did the prince visit Rapunzel in the tower next? Or did they find each other in the desert next? You're right. And then what happened last? Yes, and they found each other in the Okay, Madden, we are gonna learn how to cut today. Are you ready for that? Okay, first we need to learn how to hold the scissors. So this little hole up here is for your thumb. Show me your thumb. Yes, and then this down here is for fingers. Okay, so why don't you try it? Put your thumb in the top and fingers in the big spot. Oh, put in the same hand. Here, put this hand down. These fingers go in here like this. Now practice opening and closing. Open, close, open, close. And guess what? 
This hand has an important job. This is your helping hand. This hand gets to hold the paper. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Okay, so I have a piece of paper that has lines and a dot. You are gonna cut on the line, and when you get to the dot, you know what you're gonna do? Uh -huh. You're gonna stop, okay? Uh -huh. All right, let's try it. Use your helping hand right here. here. Other way, turn. And turn this so your thumb's up to the sky. Open and close. Nice, keep going to the dot. Do it again. Almost there, keep going. One more. Oh, thumb to the sky. Yeah, just like that. Where's your helping hand? Oh. Here, put your thumb up to the sky. There you go. Come the whole way up here. Wait, bring your scissors back here. We already started cutting this line. There you go. Keep going. Open them really wide. Oh, that was a good one. Go the whole way up here. Come to the sky. Yeah. Oh, this way. Here, your helping hand has to go on this side of the line. Do green next. <laughs> it's okay, you can fix it. Yes. Oh, that was a good cut. Open back up and go right back in the same spot. Oh, you were right on the line on that one. Open really wide. Yeah. Now go the whole way to the end. Open first. Open first. There you go. Oh, nice cut. Open again. Open. One more. Open really big. Okay. Where's your helping hand? Let's use your helping hand to hold the paper. Nice job. All right. Are you ready for the big line? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Open wide. Oh, nice. Open. You're doing a good job remembering all the things you need to to cut. Open really wide. Oh, take your time. Take your time. Open really wide. Okay, let's use your helping hand down a little closer. Your helping hand's too far away. Oh, you went the wrong direction. Open wide. There you go. Good. Oh, that was right on the line. Nice cut. Keep going. You're working really hard with your scissors. Sometimes they slip. It's good that you know how to fix it. Open line first. Oh, that was a nice big cut. Sometimes it's tricky to figure out where to put your helping hand. Your helping hand, hold on. Let's do helping hand there and scissors there. Okay, let's do, I think one more big cut will work and we'll get there. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe one more. Open up really wide. A little bit more. Oh, this is helping him for the paper, not the scissors. All right, you think you're good? Thank you so much for helping me cut today. You did a really nice job. Can I get a high five? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next week.